we can move uh, to our next speaker. Uh, I don't have to show my slides, but it is Kenner Flame uh, with his hack. To hack or not to hack. So I think we all saw on Facebook that he received a new table, a, a faulty table, uh, and he has brought it back to life. So Kenneth, okay, good you're evening, up. everyone. I, I hope my 2030 MacBook survives the presentation. It hasn't been behaving <laughs> very well. Okay, so I'm Kenneth. Um, so this whole uh, to hack or not to hack thing uh, came about because of this particular. Let me try to present. Hope it doesn't crash. Uh, came about because of this post that Tim uh, made. Uh, one to two weeks ago uh, about this frame that he's giving away because somehow the controller died on him and the new one that the supplier gave couldn't, couldn't uh, get it uh, working. So I think part of the reason why I named the talk uh, to hack or not to hack is to kind of uh, share with uh, everyone, you know, how, how I decided on whether I want to even pick up the frame or not. Right, because I mean, there are, there are always people who are keen to give you stuff, but how, how do we decide whether uh, it's worth um, spending your time on? So, so this is how I, how I uh, kind of uh, evaluated. So the first thing is, you know, he said that uh, the newer one powers the motor okay, which kind of tells you that uh, the motor itself um, is working well. And there's something weird with the signaling when it comes to a new controller, right? So, you know, I ran through the following things in my mind. Okay, good. There's two sets of controller available, which means there's some spare parts for me to possibly swap around. Um, the motto is working based on his analysis, but the new controller is only somewhat working, which is uh, possibly the area that I need to uh, look into. And the thing that it doesn't come with a tabletop, it's quite an easy thing to be fixed. You know, I can just go to Ikea or go to any uh, furniture shop and get, get it. So after looking at it and evaluating, I was thinking, okay, I think it's worth a hack. And I've been thinking about getting a motorized desk for a while. So why not, right? So, you know, I contacted the team, went down, dragged this 20 plus kg frame home and uh, spent that. Sunday afternoon, was Sunday? Yeah, Sunday afternoon, uh, putting them together. Then the next question comes, you know, I've, I've always liked to open up stuff, you know, we hardware hackers like to see what's inside, right? But we are always overly enthusiastic about it and we usually break the casing or break something along the way, which is not very helpful. You, you wanted to, you know, fix something, but you end up breaking something before you even get started. So, so I, I thought of, uh, I should come up with a plan. So the first one, I test that, you know, oh, okay, the new controller works, uh, powers up, great. The display shows something which is uh, even better. We are like more than halfway there. But then the motor doesn't move. I'm like, oh no. Then I'm like, okay, there's no other way out of this. I need to open up the old controller and figure out what, what really happened and what broke the old controller. And another thing, um, when it comes to hardware hacking, you know, we always think that we can remember the color sequence of the cable, you know, it's uh, green, red, and black. Then after two hours of hacking, and you want to put back, then you're like, uh, which cable is going where, you know? <laughs> so it's always good for us to take a photo, <laughs> make sure that everything is documented. You can see clearly in your photo, uh, which pin uh, has which cable. So that when you are ready to put it back, you don't end up putting it in reverse and shorting all your hard work away. So I took the pictures, opened up the thing and realized that, huh, the power supply is not working. Okay, let me just go back to this one. Okay, so the right side over here is an AC-DC that gives you a 32 volt to the controller, motor controller board over here. Then I did a you know, like the first fundamental thing, I quickly measure and see whether there's even power in the first place. Then I quickly realized that, ah, uh, seems like somehow the PSU is not working. So I was like, okay, good. Team gave me two set of controllers. The new one has a working power supply, so simple fix. Just swap it. 
you know, when everything is good, it's time to, you know, take the video, show to our friends, say that, you know, okay, we got it working. So, so this is a demo of uh, me putting everything together, together with my father, uh, and shows that, okay, everything is great. But that wasn't, uh, that wasn't the thing that got me um, very excited. There, there are two other things that I wanted to hack on. So the, the first one was, uh, it's very curious, why did, the, why did the power supply fail? It's very weird. So the, the place that I'm probing here with my multimeter is actually the fuse. So it's the AC fuse uh, that somehow, if you look at the ohm meter over here, it says open circuit, which means the, the AC fuse uh, kind of uh, trip, and which is why the PSU is not giving us the 32 volts. Now I was thinking, okay, you know, if the fuse broke, but you don't have a fuse at home, you should put in your own fuse. But then I was obviously not thinking, I was like, uh, I think this cable is thin enough. I mean, in my mind, uh, it's like sufficiently thin that in any event that something serious happens, it's gonna, it's gonna burn. It's like, okay, good. Temporary fuse. Then this happened. <laughs> right. So yeah, it's a good reminder for me as well, you know. Yeah, yeah, now you know. Uh, usually, when the fuse blows, is you... the rectifier bridge and the switching. Nice. Uh, is the switching tube that blows. If it, it. if those two get shorted, the fuse will get uh, the fuse will blow lah. Okay, awesome. So maybe the maybe the correct move would have, would have been to ask in headwear first, the headwear group first before you know putting my own temporary fuse. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, this was at least this kind of uh you know uh gave me a answer my curiosity or rather scratch my back on why why that PSU failed. But there's another more exciting thing that uh, you can see here in the middle of the screen. When I was looking at the board, uh, I saw this uh, UART, you know, pin out. Here it says 5 volt, RXD, TXD and ground. So I was like, uh, this, this thing is way more interesting than <laughs> getting the, the motorized frame working. So I decided that, you know, I need to wire this up, hook up to my uh, UART reader and see what was going on. But, and it ended up with no data coming in at all. And I was quite annoyed by, by what, I, what I saw. So, so let me share and why, and then I will show you a, another demo, like a real demo. Okay, so, so I was like, I was very annoyed. I was like, why, why this TXD, RXD, which is quite straightforward to us, right? It's like a UART thing. Why, why was there no data flowing? Then, then I look at this thing, now I realized that, oh, actually for this microcontroller, uh, these two pins are actually used for the programming of the MCU itself. I, I'm not sure if you can actually use it like a normal UART, you probably can, but I, it seems like it's used primarily for just um, flashing the firmware when they, when they first built the bot in the factory. So I was like, ah, okay, that explains why uh, I wasn't getting any data. But obviously I was not gonna give up, right? So uh, let me show you the demo that I have. Uh, firstly, I'm gonna switch to another cam. Maybe you can spotlight that one for me. Uh -huh. Okay, awesome. So you can see over here, uh, because it came with uh, it came with uh, two sets of uh, controller, right? So I decided to hack one of them. And currently I actually hook it up to the main controller. So this is the controller. Then I hook it up to a FTDI um, UART and then to my uh, PC itself. Okay, so what's so interesting about this, let me try to share my screen. Mm. Okay, let's do this. Okay, if you can see over here, right, it keeps sending this uh, 5-5-AA sequence over here. 
which is what I uh, figure out is like when you are in the sleep mode or idle mode, this is uh, what shows. But the moment I, hold on, uh, but the moment I start moving the table, right? You see now it's the 99.7, right? So let me, let's say I move the table and you see the number moving, right? You can see that there's actually data flowing. Then the moment the table stops, it shows 55AA again. Okay. So it was quite interesting for me. I mean, I was like, okay, I managed to hack up and really a lot of the work was spent, you know, really on paper. I was trying to study the circuit, how everything flows. And I kind of managed to get some data. So I figured out that, you know, uh, if it's at height 123 cm, this is the hex data that gets sent. You know, if it's at uh, the lowest height of 73, you get, you get this. But the whole trouble with this whole setup, right, is that uh, I'm actually guessing the board rate. I don't really know what was the uh, original setting. So there's, there's data flowing, but I'm not very sure is if that was the actual intended uh, data that uh, we are supposed to be seeing. Uh. But at least, you know, you can capture something and in the event I really want to hack further, I can uh, do like a table mapping, I guess. I can map a particular hex sequence to a particular height and yeah, continue to do something uh, with the controller. Yeah, so that's what I have for the sharing. So the, the one, two, three is like a, yeah. like a preposition, it's like memory kind of thing, is it? Uh, in, in the remote control? It's actually not. Uh, so the lowest height is 73 and the highest is 123. So I was just trying to get the, the table at a predefined height so that I can kind of uh, see uh, what's the hex data that gets sent. So when you trying press, to find a kind of a pattern there. When you press one or two, there's like different, but the one, two, oh. three? That's, that's, oh, that's the, the, that's the, the preset. Preset thing. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. You can actually uh, save uh, like. Uh, how much uh, weight can you put on the on that table? Oh, that's a good it... question. I, I can't remember. It's like 40, 60? I can't remember. I need to check the menu. Okay, okay, guys. It's quite, yeah. quite solid. Uh... It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I have a fixed desk from like, like IKEA, but I load it with, you know, like synthesizer box or whatever. So I'd like to have something that, that can vary because sometimes you feel like, you know, it's lower than... Right. So those are quite quite nice to... Uh... And yeah. The, the, in the middle, uh, there's like two legs, but actually it's quite stable, is it? I saw the picture yeah. on your Facebook. Yep, it's pretty, it's like an inverted T-shape with like a center horizontal bar. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty stable, yeah. How do you hide the cables, Kenneth? <laughs> How do I hide the cables? Actually, it's, it's quite tidy, uh, but it's a bit weird to show you my cabling but uh, it's, it's quite it's quite neat below basically i i kind of uh, align everything to the right side and just route them to the cable tray below oh by the way you want to find the bot rate right you can actually yeah. you have an oscilloscope you can actually use an oscilloscope and do some mats and you can find it out yeah sadly i don't <laughs> if not that would be quite a fun thing to do If if you receive stuff from like an Arduino, uh, the Arduino will uh, unless you have the nice board right, the Arduino should not. I mean, within an error, the Arduino should not really uh, give you the value or something. You know? Yeah, I think the because if, the you, thing if you really put like a high board rate, it's yeah. expecting to have very fine, you know, very fine edge. So yeah. you you could kind of guess the. And usually the I don't think the board rate is, like you know. 32, 32, 5, 2, 3 or whatever, it tends to be pretty... Yeah, so pretty the thing, I, I tried changing the baud rate, right? So I was, I was trying to figure out, am I, am I on the right baud rate and am I on the right beta bit and everything? So I, I changed the baud rate up and down. Now I, said, I, I realized that at a higher baud rate, the data doesn't change. So, so I kind of uh, know that uh, probably not in that range. Then I, I kind of went down uh, lower. And I use some of the more uh, common baud rates. Uh. 
that they probably will use. But I, I, I mean, I can't tell for sure whether it's the actual one because it, this is kind of like reverse engineering the thing. But I'm, I'm quite happy that I got the data out. Yeah. I think it was more enjoyable than getting a motorized test. Are you able to uh, do any kind of control on the table? As in yes. Like, yeah. You mean, I mean like uh, hack the controller? In, yeah, maybe like put in a uh, remote controller in it and uh, yeah. you know, automate the thing. Yeah, that, that's the reason why I was hacking on the controller actually. Oh, <laughs> I, was, nice. I was thinking of using my MacBook and just say like down and it just goes down. I mean, even though the controller is just on the right, but yeah. So. Yeah, or you could, or you, could you should uh, schedule it at certain times where you, know, you should be standing up, then uh, you automatically go up, then you're forced to stand up as well. Okay, now, now you're motivating <laughs> me to continue hacking. So, uh, actually, I figured out that it's, the, I mean, we think that it's kind of advanced, but really there's only two pins constraining the up and down. That's why I realized. And the motto itself knows when it's at the highest or lowest limit. I think that's kind of like a limit switch inside. So you don't have to be afraid of sending the wrong signal. Yeah, I think it's just two pins. Like if one is high and one is low, it goes up. If the other one is low and the other one is high, it goes like down. Yeah, it's quite straightforward. So the, the display signal and the, the motor control is really separated. Nice. I, I just find it weird that they don't just use UART for everything. So. Can I? Yeah, Anand. Hey, hi. Um, from the motor itself, do you detect Show your face, point? show your face, and then show your face. <laughs> Tonight, everybody is showing their face. Why are you not showing your face? Okay, okay. <laughs> oh. Hi, Kenneth. Hey, Anand. Yeah, um, from the motor unit itself, do you detect yeah. any form of quadrature wow. encoder? <laughs> That's a very tough question. Uh, I yeah. didn't have a scope or something, so I couldn't tell. All right. So were there additional pins that might um, be used directly to the CPU in, in some fashion? To, does it does it know the exact height it's supposed to reach, or it just goes up all the way to the limit switches? Mm, I think I think the motto is reporting it to the controller. I think so. Because yeah. uh, I, uh, so uh, yeah, it's a good question. I tried uh, moving the table up halfway and cut off the power to see whether it remembers <laughs> where, where it stopped. And mm. yeah, obviously it did. Uh, I think I see two wires going to the controller from the Moto uh, port. Just nice. haven't, right. haven't got, gotten to that two pin yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, previously, I worked with Altism to design the electronics and um, uh, there's actually recorded the height of the table itself. Nice. So I was wondering whether yours has an encoder within it also. Uh, I'm thinking that yeah. I probably won't be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks anyway. Yeah. Do you usually have like a current for the for the limit? You have a current detector or something? Uh, so you mean like uh, upper yeah. and lower limit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, usually, I, I would expect that he has. Otherwise, you would, you would be pushing, 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 and. Uh, I think internally the motor knows uh, the limit. So when when it's quite near the upper and lower, it kind of slows down, which is nice. Yeah. So when you're like one twenty, it will slow down until it goes to one twenty three. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It's quite well designed, I guess. Oh, any other questions? Okay, if not, um, thank you, hey, Kenneth. Uh, hey, hey oh, Kenneth, one uh, I want to ask, you want my scope? I have a 100 megahertz scope uh, from Tech. It's a 468. Oh, sounds, sounds interesting. <laughs> it's, uh, it works up to like 200 megahertz, uh, but yeah. Oh. Semi-digital, you want, you can get, uh, I'm selling for about 50, 50 to 100. Okay. Can you wow. go? Let's do it. Where's your house? No, no. Pasari, Pasari. <laughs> okay, can. Carry yourself. Can have a chat with you later. Oh. Recently, recently, everyone stay home too much and like just giving away stuff. So <laughs> it's an exciting time for us. I still got like one signal generator and a lot of stuff. Okay, I'm sure there are people here 
who might be interested. <laughs> yes, please post it on the Hackware group. Yeah, yeah. Do I just post it like uh, in the group or is there some way I can say a marketplace listing or something like that? Uh, I, I don't really know how to use Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I guess just post a picture, you know, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, well, okay. Uh, if there's no other questions, I guess maybe you can take it offline later if you have more questions. So thank you very much, Kenneth. Uh, thank you. And, um, yeah, so uh, I think there's a one announcement. Maybe I'll just say it lah. Uh, out uh, GeekCam, uh, CFP is open. I think GeekCam is uh, scheduled to happen next month, September. So yes, if you have a talk, please submit it now. It closes on 21st of August. Uh, I, I believe it's going to be online also. So yeah, you can start using Hackware to practice also <laughs> before you present at the conference. Um, besides that, does anyone else has any uh, announcements looking to hire people or looking for a job? Do a shout out now. No. No. Okay. Well, uh, if there's nothing, I think thank you so much to everybody who has uh, who attended today and to the speakers and of course to engineers.sg for sponsoring this and uh, take care, everybody. Thank uh, you. We'll see you in the next hardware. Do check out the Facebook and Meetup page. Okay. See you. Take yeah. care, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 So care. I think I think Michael will leave this room open for a while. So maybe if you guys still want to chat, please. I don't see Michael's face. Where Where's Michael? Oh, oh here uh, he's the engineer's FG. Nice. All right. Stop recording. <laughs>